Thank you, Michele, uh, and thank you to everybody who is here. Uh, I just want to uh, welcome you to Spotlight on Salto, a series of six online info sessions aimed at highlighting the opportunities of the Erasmus Plus Plus Youth and European Solidarity Corps programs, where you get to learn more about the activities and the tools of Salto Resource Centers and the humans behind all this amazing work. Uh, today, the spotlight is on our three regional Salto uh, resource centers, uh, Salto Eastern Europe and Caucasus, Salto Euromed and Salto Southeast Europe. Uh, today, together, we'll explore uh, what kind of opportunities are available for organizations and individuals in the Western Balkans, Eastern Partnership and Russia, and in the South Mediterranean. I'm going to quickly take you through what will happen today. Uh, so we'll start the session by getting to know a bit more about the role and the different contexts of the three regional saltos and the people behind this work. Um, and because the whole purpose of this webinar is to connect you with Salto, Salto with you, you between each other. Uh, in addition to opening the doors to, to Salto, we will also turn the camera back at you and see where you're joining us from and hopefully uh, give you some space for you all to connect with each other uh, for future projects, collaborations, and so on. Um, We'll continue the day with some strategic framing of the regional saltos, and then you'll hear more about the new European youth program opportunities for cooperation with partner countries. And to close it up, we will end with a question and answers uh, part. Uh, so please do uh, engage with the information presented to you today and um, let us know any questions you may have. Uh, for our speakers. Uh, there will be a few speakers today. You'll get to know them very soon. In order to uh, let us know about your questions, you will have a Mentimeter link in the chat. And uh, so please go there at any time and add your questions. And you will also be able to vote on other people's questions in case you find them uh, very interesting and useful for you as well. Great. Uh, so this will be our webinar a short uh, a summary of it. To introduce myself, I am Dani and I'm gonna be the facilitator of this event together with Michele, from whom you've heard from before, and also uh, Vanda, who is our graphic recorder. Hello, hello. So we will be holding the space for you and hopefully uh, make sure that this is a smooth uh, process for us all, where you get the chance to learn and to uh, to engage with each other. All right, uh, but before we start, uh, I just want us to, to arrive fully here at, the, at our webinar. So I will invite you all, if you can, to put your phone away, close your email, close your Facebook, your Twitter, I'm not sure what do people use nowadays. So just close them for a moment. Uh, and join me in uh, taking a really, really, really deep breath in hmm. and a deep breath out. And remind yourself what was the intention with which you came here at this webinar today. Maybe it was learning new things, new opportunities, Maybe it was to find future partners or maybe something completely different. So take this intention with you and let it uh, set you in the right mood for today uh, and support you to be present, to be open and connected with all of us who are here in the meeting. All right, so with this energy, let's dive right into it. And I'm gonna invite Maite to start us off. Hello everybody, Hello. thank you very much, Dani. Um, yes, yeah, so to introduce very briefly uh, the three regional Salto centers as we 
uh, we name them. Uh, so you know, it's, uh, we are part of the, the Salto Network Centers. And uh, why we are called regional, because um, we are particularly supporting the implementation of the two, uh, two youth programs, uh, so Erasmus Plus and um, European Solidarity Corp in the neighboring partner countries of the EU. And um, with this, uh, we are, uh, our aim is to foster a strategic and innovating cooperation between the stakeholders of, of the, the program countries and the partner countries of Erasmus Plus and so the European Solidarity Corp. So uh, as the other Salto centers, we, are, uh, we, we have uh, the activities by, of supporting the network of national agencies, of course, uh, but also participate or organize events uh, in order to, um, uh, to share the, the programs and their impact and also uh, produce information via cyber centers, um, resource centers, um, and um, also offer, offer or help to uh, develop training courses for multipliers uh, in, our, uh, in our region and um, coordinate our national supports uh, in, the, in the three regions. So uh, the three Salto centers, as you mentioned them, are so for the Eastern Partnership Countries and Russia, the Salto EECA, which is located in Poland. Uh, for the Western Balkan country, the Salto SEE, which is located in Slovenia. And for the South, South Mediterranean countries, the Salto Euromed, um, located in France. And uh, I will uh, going to present you now the Salto Euromed Center, uh, as I, I am actually the coordinator of, of this center. So I will present it uh, to you and then uh, um, uh, pass then uh, to, after that, to uh, my colleagues, Tomek and, and Sonia. Um, so uh, I, I wanted to share my screen, if it's possible. Uh, so just to uh, show you uh, what we uh, are speaking about when we, we speak about the South Mediterranean. So um, the countries uh, in the field of action of Salto Rio Med are the following, as you can see in the map. So it's Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, uh, Libya, Egypt, um, Jordan, Israel, Palestine, and Syria. Um, of course, due to geopolitical context, it's difficult for us for the moment to implement any kind of activities involving Libya and Syria, but we hope that it will be the case uh, soon again. Uh, so uh, to, to say you quickly, the overall purposes of Salto Euromed, uh, they are the, to provide assistance and expertise on the youth cooperation with the partner countries in the South Mediterranean to facilitate the access of the organization from South Mediterranean to both programs, um, to support the competence building of youth workers and other actors working with, uh, with young people in, this, in the area, and, and enhance contact and partnership building between organization from program and partner countries. And also um, we have the specificity to uh, provide support for the implementation of the European Solidarity Corp in the South Mediterranean, uh, which includes uh, training and evaluation cycle for volunteers and also uh, the, uh, the quality label process. So just to give you some relevant figures for two, 2020, we have about 100 organizations from the South Mediterranean to have become uh, uh, to have a, a quality label for the European Solidarity Corp in the South Mediterranean. Uh, Tunisia, Morocco, Israel, and Palestine are the more represented uh, countries for this program. Um, Morocco, Tunisia, and Algeria are the most countries involved in Erasmus project, and the majority of projects. Um, in the frame of Erasmus Plus are developed uh, in the uh, key action one, which is youth exchange and youth mobility. And, uh, and just the last word about the team, we are uh, four people now, Stephanie, Pauline, Chrisana, and myself. My colleagues are there, I know they are there. 
And so uh, we are, in, as I said, we are in Paris and we, are, we would be very happy, of course, to give you all information about the partnership with the South Mediterranean and very willing to have contact with uh, everybody. So I pass to Tome for start. <coughs> Thank you, Maite. Uh, my name is Tomek Chopa and I work in Salto Eastern Europe and Caucasus. So now for a few minutes, I would like to introduce you to our region. Uh, we are the resource center based in Poland and we are supporting cooperation with the, uh, the Eastern partners of the European Union. Uh, so I also wanted to share with you a map and to take you for a little journey. So, uh, Especially if you are coming from program countries, from European Union, that's usually how you imagine Europe, right? So we need to go a bit eastwards uh, to discover the countries that we work with. So first of all, we have these uh, three countries uh, based in Eastern Europe, uh, Belarus, Ukraine and Moldova. Uh, then we can continue to the Caucasus, where we support Georgia, Armenia and Azerbaijan in our programs but we also should discover Russia. And for this is always a challenge of zooming out because it's a big country and very interesting one. So we are supporting the country that spans here for several time zones uh, up here to Japan and to Kamchatka and bordering with Alaska. Um, from the exotic uh, facts, uh, we used to have one accredited organization in Kamchatka hosting international volunteers. And there are some organizations based here in Siberia, uh, Siberian part of Russia, but mostly the youth work, uh, the European youth work uh, uh, as part of Erasmus and Solidarity Corps is taking place here in central Russia. Uh, I wanted to share with you two more facts, which people usually don't know. Um, one thing is uh, there is this, uh, Russia is a federal uh, state and it's, it's made of uh, different um, uh, units. Uh, one of them is uh, Kalmykia here. It's a Buddhist republic and it lies in Europe. So if you are interested in this kind of things, uh, Buddhism, people usually connect with uh, Tibet, uh, but uh, here in Kalmykia in Russia, we also have the Buddhist republic. And if we go to Tatarstan with the capital in Kazan, this is uh, a historical uh, republic uh, and uh, the, with the culture based so much on Islam. And it's still in Europe because the Europe, geographical Europe is finishing only in here, if you see the Ural mountains. Okay, that's more or less about geography, but you can imagine these countries are very diverse also in terms of cultures, languages, and it's not only about the national languages, each of them are having the official language and our Salto struggles to, work, to make our work, to promote the programs and to make connections with different organizations and stakeholders in their local languages. But there's also, of course, a number of uh, minorities, uh, diversity of uh, intercultural diversity, uh, which makes the region very rich and very interesting. In terms of uh, involvement in the program, uh, uh, some of the countries are uh, more active. And here I would name especially Ukraine, Georgia, Moldova, also in terms of number of quality labels for Solidar Solidarity Corps. Uh, projects, uh, they are uh, uh, usually around 40 organizations involved, while the other countries, Armenia, yes, of course, Armenia is also uh, on this level of uh, involvement, uh, while Belarus, uh, Azerbaijan uh, are a bit less involved, uh, but there our Salto uh, is also putting a lot of effort to involve those organizations from these countries. And if you are coming from program countries, you are very much invited to cooperate with all of them. And concerning our team, uh, we are a team of uh, four officers. Uh, um, we are international team because we, even though we are based in Poland, we are made of uh, uh, people coming from Poland, Ukraine and Belarus. And each Christmas, we are actually celebrating according to all different calendars where we come from and of the countries we, that we work. And this will be at least three different dates for Christmas. 
So here is us sharing the uh, Christmas wishes. Yes. Trying to put a bit of a human face to our work. Thank you very much. And I pass on to Sonia from South of Southeast Europe. Hi, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Um, very nice to be here with you today. So my name is Sonia and um, I'm coordinating Salto Southeast Europe. Um, contrary to the vast region that you've just seen um, on the map that was introduced by Tomek, um, our center works with a, a much smaller, um, nevertheless diverse region in the... Do you hear me? It's okay. Um, in the southeast of Europe. Um, I'm going to share a map as well now, since we all have done that. Um, and um, so we are working in particular um, with Albania, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Kosovo, and Montenegro, and to some extent also with Serbia. It's a beautiful region. Um, if you've been on holidays to Croatia, maybe, um, or to some other country on the Adriatic coast, you know that it extends down further north, south to Montenegro and Albania. Um, it's also a region with um, quite high and wild mountains, um, beautiful nature, generally speaking. Lots of historical heritage, um, of course, from the different times that um, influenced um, the region from the Ottoman Empire, the Habsburg Empires. Um, which, for instance, are very visible, um, architecturally speaking, in Sarajevo, um, but also elsewhere, and of course, also um, the time of socialism. Um, it's um, a region which is actually geographically very much in the center of Europe, if you look at it like this. It's surrounded by EU member countries, um, and in that sense, um, it's clearly very much... Um, yeah, um, I would say a part of Europe, like all the other countries that you see on this map. Um, I will stop sharing here. And um, the um, maybe um, typical or maybe interesting um, um, aspect about this region is also which sets it apart from the other neighboring regions, um, that it's um, a region which is in the process of accession to the European Union. Um, over, and also to the EU programs. So in our work that is constantly changing, I mean, how we can work with the different countries um, of, this, of this region. Um, as you know, North Macedonia and Serbia have already joined um, the Erasmus Plus program um, years ago. Uh, Macedo North Macedonia has also joined the European Solidarity Corps. Um, Serbia is expected to do that also um, in um, the not too far away future. And um, also all the other countries. Um, the partner countries we're working with um, have the possibility to do so um, in, in, in the next years. Our team um, also consists of four colleagues. Um, I guess that's the, pretty much the standard size um, that, that we're having for the Saltos um, at the moment. Um, and um, I um, wanted to share a picture as well of our team here. Um, but unfortunately only one, um, which we have on the website anyway. So you can check it out there as well. Um, we're also an international team. Um, I'm from Germany and my colleague Maya, who you see on the picture next to me is from Finland. Um, and then we have two other colleagues, Andre and Susanna, who's also here with us. Um, we haven't seen each other as a whole team for quite a while. Therefore, the, the latest picture I can find of us is, is the one we're actually having on the web. Um, Andre is supporting the Solidarity Core, in particular, all the support measures we have for that. Um, and um, Susanna is helping us with everything. Um, and um, Maya is doing a lot of international support activities. Um, just the last word, maybe, uh, maybe about the region and our work. Um, so clearly, we're supporting the development um, of um, the cooperation in, in the framework of the program. So project development, we do various support activities and resources um, to promote this. Um, but we also see the program very much as a tool to support youth work development in the region, um, as well as the competences and skills of young people and, and youth workers um, involved. Um, and 
um, given the, the maybe also the nature of the region, um, we also um, feel very strongly that um, supporting personal contacts between people and supporting inside the, the programs and supporting European cooperation is a, is a great tool to support also um, the European integration in the widest sense um, of the countries of the region. There's a lot of potential out there, a lot of experience, um, a lot of um, really engaged um, people, I think, working in, in, in the organizations there, amazing work that's being done. Um, if you're looking for organizations doing the Solidarity Core, um, I have not collected statistics here, but you can all find them on the European Youth Portal, which is about all the regions, actually. And um, in a few minutes, um, anyway, you will hear a few more details about what we're planning to do and how we can support um, the work further. Great, thank you so much, Sonia. And thank you, Tomek, and thank you, Maite. Uh, wow, indeed, such a, a, a wide range of countries, of uh, um, different topics, and I'm sure your work is extremely interesting and I am looking forward to hearing more and I'm sure are the people present here too. Uh, and because all of you went into the, the map uh, metaphor and reality, of course, uh, I'm gonna use this map uh, idea as well. Um, for those of you who um, registered for this event, you received an email from Tomek uh, with a link for today. And um, he also sent to you a, a Padlet link uh, where he invited you to, to join us and to uh, say who you are, where you're coming from, and what are the types of uh, things that you do with your organization or your group. Uh, and we would really love that uh, you take a moment now to also contribute there. Because as I said in the beginning, uh, the whole purpose of this meeting is to connect with each other and with the work of Sal the Sal regional Saltos. Uh, so we would really lo love it if this would be useful for you in this way as well. So if you could uh, go to the link that I pasted in the chat uh, or in the email, if that's easier for you. Um, and please add your name there, your organization, maybe a website. Uh, thank you, Bahadir, for example, you put your contacts here exactly like that. Uh, any contacts that you believe that uh, might be useful for other people to, to contact you. Um, maybe some of the some words about the work you do. What are the uh, topics that you work with most often? Uh, topics in which you would like to uh, partner with others. All right, so as you do that, I'm going to go to the map as well and see who is here in the room with us today. Okay. So hello, everybody. Let's see. So if we go up north, we have hello. I saw your face in the Zoom. Uh, yes, we have uh, some people from the north uh, part of Europe. Who else? People from Ljubljana, from Italy, from Tunis, from Athens. from Turkey, Azerbaijan. And Romania. So please continue to add on the map here. And also I'm gonna invite you to uh, use this map if you can, uh, in order to connect with each other further. Okay, great. So please keep on adding to the Padlet if you want. And as you do that, I'm gonna take the chance to also remind you that uh, you can ask us questions as people uh, will be speaking. Please continue to ask us questions in the uh, Menti link that you received and that Michaela will soon put again in the chat so that uh, we hear from you uh, and from 
Uh, what would you like us to go more into detail? All right, so with this said, uh, we got to know you a little bit and hopefully the map will be filled in with uh, uh, even more information for, about you. Um, and next we are going to go a bit more into details uh, about the regional saltos and uh, I'm gonna ask Sonia to, to take us through, through this next part. Yes, thank you very much, Dani. Um, so I will tell you um, a bit more about, um, well, about what we are doing at the moment or what we're planning to do um, in our work with the regions for the coming um, years, maybe. Um, and um, I will, um, start by saying a few words about um, maybe why this cooperation with partner countries is in any way special and maybe different um, from the rest of the cooperation that we're seeing inside the program. So what's the added value? Um, I will take you um, through um, our plans, overall plans for the next period and why we feel that there's a need um, for more action now than maybe in the past years or maybe for a new for a moment to take a fresh look at the situation and see what needs to be done. Um, and at the end, um, I will finish with a few concrete um, issues of what's coming next, um, what's going to happen this year. Opportunities for cooperation um, and um, partnerships existing between organizations and partners from program countries um, and um, neighboring partner countries have existed for quite a while already. And also the Salto centers have existed since, um, well, for about 20 years. Um, so this is not new in a way. A lot of, a lot of great work has been done. Um, however, we feel that maybe it's a good moment um, to take a new look and to put the cooperation with the neighboring partner countries a bit higher on the agenda um, within the overall cooperation that is supported by the Erasmus Plus and European Solidarity Corps programs. The new programs have just been launched um, and we're really at the start of the process. Um, so what I can give you at the moment is an outlook um, more than um, a concrete list of plans. Cooperation with neighboring partner countries um, is important, um, maybe for the simple reason that Europe is not a closed shop. Um, at least in our view, it's not that. And I think also in the, in the view of the programs, it's not. Um, otherwise, there wouldn't be an international dimension and um, there wouldn't be efforts being made to, um, to promote um, cooperation beyond the borders of the European Union or the program countries um, that are a part, um, that, that, that are members of, full members of the Erasmus Plus and European Solidarity Corps programs. Um, experiencing differences, um, recognizing what you have in common, what you can learn from each other, and to transfer that experience into your environment and into your work is, of course, always exciting, no matter what partners you work with and where they come from. Um, nevertheless, um, it might be worth underlining that um, we have found um, through past um, evaluations and um, feedback we've received from, from youth workers and young people involved in projects, that um, partnerships and projects involving partners from neighboring program countries, in particular, foster intercultural learning, um, awareness and respect of pluralism and diversity, um, critical thinking, um, and in particular in the EU countries, also a stronger interest in democratic citizenship and human rights issues. Um, and it's also been shown that um, an external view on the EU, um, which is then naturally provided by those participants coming from countries that are not members of the European Union, um, contributes to raising youth workers and young people's awareness of the specificities, um, as well as the recognition of the benefits offered um, by the EU. On the other side, um, in the partner countries, the programs have been engines for the further development and recognition of youth work in many cases. Um, they represent tools, of course, for organizations to create networks. I mean, that is everywhere the case. Um, they develop competences and capacities, um, increase their awareness about Europe um, as well, 
um, and um, the specific support tools and trainings and also the projects um, have also helped to um, smaller organizations in particular to be recognized on international level um, and to gain access to specific training. We have seen um, in the course of the Erasmus Plus program though, um, that there are also many challenges um, involved in this cooperation, which have nothing to do with the general challenges that you see like uh, visa or things like this, which might often be um, difficult um, for organizations to manage. Um, but um, more generally speaking, it's um, become more difficult um, for many organizations that are entering this cooperation or would like to organize projects to find partners. Um, the programs are not easy to access um, because organizations and partner countries cannot apply directly. Um, so it's, it's difficult for them to use the program strategically and yet, unless you're working in a very sustainable and stable partnership um, with partners in, in, in a program country. Um, and of course, that carries the risk to some extent also that organizations who find it difficult to count on support, financial support coming in, that they lose motivation um, to engage with the programs. Um, also, we find that there's not enough visibility um, of the added value of this cooperation um, and um, the experiences and the good examples of practice that are existing. Um, so we also need to look at ourselves and see what support we can provide better. On the other hand, we see there's great potential. We also see that there is great interest by many organizations and youth workers really across Europe to engage um, in, in cooperation with each other. So therefore, um, we have um, set together over the course of the past couple of years, um, as in particular before the start of Corona, um, really in 2019, um, we have put together a lot of evidence and um, have put together recommendations on how to work further and that it's time for a new approach or new, not a new approach, but maybe a new dynamics of, of what is happening. Um, we would like to, as I said, um, give this topic, uh, this, this, this cooperation more attention um, and generally bring more recognition and support to the what is called international dimension uh, in the programs um, and also enhance the visibility um, of it. This means in particular um, that our aim um, will be to work together more strongly between um, the three regional saltos um, and also the national agencies to um, with the aim to increase the number and the quality of the projects and partnerships and to support access to organizations that are new to this cooperation and also to further support the development and recognition of youth work in the program uh, in the partner regions in particular with through by using the tools that the programs can make available. We want to see what we can do together, what are our joint priorities for this, um, how this can be addressed in a pan-European context, um, and what is specific, maybe for the different countries and the different regions. Very concretely, um, in the coming year, um, we um, will engage um, in um, taking a good look at the needs that exist and the interests. Um, and um, have already started launching a process of consultations of key stakeholders in, for the moment, the partner countries, um, to ask them to bring them together at national level, at regional levels, depending a bit on the region, how this works, um, to ask them, what are your needs? What are your interests? What would you like to see? Where do you think is a need for support? And what do you think we can do best um, from the side of national agencies and CELTUS to support? Um, in the Balkans, that is starting tomorrow. Um, and you can see the announcements on the Facebook page already. Um, also, for Eastern Europe, that's starting and for the Euromed countries as well. So make sure you follow us um, if you want to be a part of that, if you're coming from a partner country. Um, on the other side, also the program countries are super important for us. I mean, we want to hear the voice of those that have already experienced or would like to work more with these countries. So we're reaching, we will be reaching out to you as well. Um, probably more likely in the autumn um, and into spring 2020. The priorities for the coming three years will be built on that process. Um, that will help us to define the, the clear thematic priorities 
um, as well as the types of activities, um, competence building activities, for instance, that um, are mostly needed. Um, we will also launch a communication portal, um, which will make it easier to find information, both of experiences and good projects, examples, and so on that exist, um, but also generally information about the regions, about the programs, and so on. And last but not least, maybe most interesting at the moment, um, is we are um, also starting with partner finding activities um, to give more opportunities, and um, those will start in the autumn. Um, we hope it will be we will be able to organize the first bigger launching event in Paris in December. Um, so that is definitely on the map, but of course we also have to see how the developments um, with um, Corona will be. What you can do in the meantime is um, well um, engage um, in the cooperation if you're already engaged. Um, find out how the programs work if you're new to it. Um, a bit of information is coming now, a glimpse of that. And um, if you need partners, if you're new to this, then listen to um, a bit more longer and use the tools that are available. Um, I think there are tools out there that you can use. Um, and of course, you're always welcome to contact us as well. Um, I think that's it from me at the moment. And um, I will hand over back to Danny, I think, who will introduce the next um moment so to allow you to find out more about the programs and what they offer um in which will make maybe also more concrete give you more concretely an idea of what we are actually talking about mm -hmm. thank you yeah thank you sonia thank you vanda for the graphic recording um yeah we found out now, I feel that we have uh, a lot of information about the saltos and about uh, the purpose in, uh, in this uh, work that we, we do around uh, a youth. And uh, I think it's been pretty, pretty generous of you to share all these ideas. And uh, I hope that uh, everybody who is watching us has uh, something to take out of it. Uh, if anything from what uh, the speakers until now shared, uh, raise your interest, please do uh, let us know with any questions, uh, either in the chat or um, in the Menti link. So as Sonia said, we are now going to move into uh, uh, the next part of our webinar where we will focus on new European youth program opportunities for cooperation with partner countries. And we are going to be joined by um, some new people that you have not seen yet, uh, representatives from national agencies. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Tomek to start us off and then uh, also introduce uh, Natasha and Pavel uh, as they will be also sharing a bit from their perspective on these uh, new opportunities that may be very useful for, for you all. So um, both programs, both European youth programs, Erasmus Plus and European Solidarity Corps offers opportunities to cooperate uh, with the partner countries. Um, and there you can find uh, a number of uh, different formats, uh, different projects. Uh, the colleagues uh, from the national agency and Sonia from Salto will explain them. But um, knowing that maybe uh, not all of us here in the room, uh, in the Zoom the room are on the same ground, I just wanted to very briefly tell you what our programs about. And Erasmus Plus uh, is uh, generally the European Union program for education, sport and youth. And we are dealing with this youth sector uh, and our saltos are specifically uh, dealing and supporting the youth work development and youth sector of Erasmus Plus program. Uh, and it has several uh, priorities that we are also fostering. Um, and among the general ones, it's uh, the inclusion and diversity. The program tries to support these aspects of development of the youth work in Europe. Being inc inclusive, supporting inclusive youth work, but also supporting uh, diversity, intercultural diversity, and so on. There also, uh, the program uh, aims at uh, supporting uh, digital transformation. Of course, the pandemic had an impact on this aspect, uh, but uh, definitely uh, digital transformation, digital youth work, 
uh, online learning, all of those aspects are important despite the pandemic. And we know and we expect that even if the pandemic had uh, influence in here, it finishes, I mean, the pandemic, but the priority will stay and uh, we will be uh, developing here. Um, and maybe also in this context, it is important in terms of the partner countries, because as you could see on the maps, uh, we are working with quite big distances, big uh, geographically big regions, but also in terms of population with really populations of millions of young people and uh, digital youth work online learning allows us to make this possible. And there also the environment, uh, nature, all these aspects are important. Of course, we all observe it in, in, uh, in Europe. We hear about it, but also the program Erasmus Plus is um, focusing at the, this aspects and supporting uh, uh, environmentally friendly youth work and uh, environment as a topic for the project. Um, all right, and then uh, the fourth priority for our Erasmus Plus uh, new program is uh, youth participation in democratic life. Uh, so the programs is supporting all different kinds of uh, involvement of young people into civic society uh, as active citizens. Um, that's more or less for Erasmus Plus, and soon you will hear from the colleagues what are the concrete formats of cooperation there. Uh, but we also have the second program, uh, European Solidarity Corps, uh, which allows uh, to uh, make international volunteering projects. Uh, the objectives here are quite similar, but of course the main uh, focus is uh, paid to the aspects of solidarity. Uh, with all its different uh, understandings. Uh, the Solidarity Corps did a very interesting research. In every country, uh, in every culture, we understand solidarity a bit differently. Uh, but that's actually what makes us rich and what uh, is interesting in our program. Um, uh, both are agencies with support of the SALTO uh, centers. Uh, and as you could already hear, this is important to remember in context of cooperation with partner countries uh, that the projects can be applied to national agencies. So organizations from partner countries needs to be always in partnership with the organization from program country, European Union Plus. Uh, so together they can apply to the national agency and get grants. But of course, the projects can be implemented in the partner countries so uh, if you do a youth exchange, so with a group of young people, or if you do a training seminar as a youth worker, youth trainer, you can, of course, visit all the countries that we were showing on the map. Um, um, mm -mm. That's more or less it uh, for the very basic information. And maybe we go now into international volunteering uh, as part of the uh, European Solidarity Corps. And our colleague Natasha from uh, Slovenian National Agency will explain you a bit more on this. Hello, everybody. I hope uh, you hear me well. Um, so my, I will present first the format of cooperation, like to make said, the volunteering project. The vol volunteering projects are part of a European Solidarity Corps. So firstly, we will um, talk about this program more in detail. Uh, volunteering projects um, um, can have two types of um, activity. The, or, or maybe let's, let's go from the beginning and very shortly, I will just say what the volunteering projects are all about. These projects offer opportunities to young people to go and work in, um, in an organization. While they work in the organization, they address some needs that were identified by the organization. They help to improve something um, in the local community. And with the work that they do, they learn. And this is called the process of non-formal learning. And this is what it's all about in volunteering projects. So what kind of types of activities can happen in volunteering projects? So the first type is individual volunteering. 
Uh, individual volunteering means that one person, um, or it can be also more persons at the same time, but um, um, this doesn't really matter. So a person can go and work in the organization for the period of two months minimum, up to 12 months. In case that this um, individual, this volunteer is uh, youngsters with fewer opportunities, the activity can be only two weeks long, up to 12 months. So the same as in normal activity. Um, and the, this individual volunteering can be in country or cross border. When we talk about cooperation with neighboring, neighboring partner countries, uh, in country um, volunteering, it's not possible. Because this means that, that, for example, a Russian youngster would go and volunteer in a, in a Russian organization, and this is not possible. So when we talk about cooperation with neighboring partner countries, we talk only about cross-border. And this means that a youngster from one country goes into another country to do a volunteering activity in an organization. And this can happen in two ways. For example, the first way is that um, a volunteer from neighboring partner countries uh, goes and uh, does a volunteering activity in an organization from program country. This is possible. What is not possible that a volunteer from neighboring partner country goes and does a volunteering activity in neighboring partner country. This is not possible. So in this case, uh, or, uh, this volunteer from neighboring partner country needs to find or needs to have an organization um, uh, from neighboring partner country. Uh, and this organization needs to have a quality label for volunteering for the support role. So that this organization can be part uh, of a project um, like um, a partner and, and having support role in the organization. The second way of cooperation is that organization from neighboring partner country hosts a volunteer from program country. This is possible. What is not possible that organization from neighboring partner country hosts a volunteer from neighboring partner country. This is not possible. And in this case, the um, organization from neighboring partner country needs to have a quality label for the hosting role. And with this uh, quality label for a, host, for a hosting role, organization from neighboring partner country is a, a partner organization in a project. So these are the possibilities in, in, for individual volunteering. Another type of volunteering activities uh, are volunteering teams. Volunteering teams are different because for one, they are shorter. They can be from two weeks to two months long. And there needs to be at least, at, at least 10 persons at the same time and up to 40, 40 10, between 10 and 40 persons at the same time doing something um, specific. Um, and these volunteering teams, teams can also ha happen either in program countries or in any of the neighboring partner countries. Again, um, they can be, this kind of projects can be only applied by program countries. We will talk about this a bit later. Um, again, uh, the same rule goes here as in individual volunteering. If a volunteering teams happen in program country, then any, Anyone from uh, neighboring partner countries can take part in volunteering teams. If volunteering teams is happening in neighboring partner countries, then um, um, volunteers from program countries can happen. And also volunteers from the country where these volunteering teams is uh, hosted. There is only one difference here, important difference in relation to individual volunteering. Um, it's not obligatory to have support organization if you want to take part in um, volunteering teams. 
So for example, if there is one volunteering teams happening in Portugal, any young person from program countries or neighboring program countries can take part. They can um, connect directly with the host organization via European Youth Portal. And um, this, makes it, this makes it even easier for young persons to take part in these volunteering teams. Uh, regarding the budget, um, it's, I, would also, I would say that it's also quite simple because there are no limitations. So there is no limitation how much money from the whole amount, amount of money that is meant for volunteering activities um, can be used for uh, projects um, that are um, having cooperation with neighboring party countries. So this is good. The limitation that we see here is that um, organizations from neighboring partner countries at the moment cannot apply project by themselves. Every time that the organizations from neighboring partner countries or volunteers from these, from these countries want to be part of the project, uh, there needs to be one program country who, um, organization from program country who needs to apply a, a grant request for a project. So because of that, uh, it's important that um, organizations from program countries have this in mind, that they are open to, the, to, the particip uh, to, to cooperation with neighboring partner countries. And um, my advice to, to organizations from neighboring partner countries is besides developing partnerships uh, with um, organizations from program countries, that you also um, closely follow the uh, European youth portals, the offers that are being published there, because now it's not obligatory that when grant request is um, applied to national agency, that the uh, support organizations are listed. There are no support organizations there. And many times it happens that even after the project is, is granted, or host organizations do look for volunteers from all countries that can take part in the, in the project. Um, so I would say that make um, partnerships, long lasting quality partnerships, but at the same time, do not miss the opportunities that happen during the projects are um, happening. That would be it from my side regarding the volunteering. Thank you, Sebastian. And now we invite Pavel to, to go next. Hello from sunny Helsinki. Uh, this is the results of the Finnish jury. No, it's not. It's about uh, youth exchanges and youth uh, participation projects. These are projects that are both in the uh, uh, Erasmus Plus uh, program. And it's nicely to put them together because what is common to them is that it's they're both about youth involvement. Young people taking part in the process, uh, in the projects, have already been involved in the planning of these activities for a long time. They go through different kind of experiences when they work together. They are exposed to new new things in their lives and they learn. This is called learning by doing. And this is what is, what is happening in both in youth exchanges and youth uh, participation projects. Another common thing is that you can be uh, a young preteen from 13 years old up to a young uh, adult up, uh, in your 30s. And you can still take part in both of these activities. They can, again, both happen in the program countries and the European side or in the neighboring areas. This is uh, similar to the Solidarity Corps. And the other similar thing is that if you are a neighboring uh, organization from the neighboring areas, then you have to apply with an organization in a program country. Now, uh, both of these project types um, the young people's involvement in the projects is very important, but hardly uh, any of the young people can make them on their own. 
you see the you know the age of the young people. A 13-year-old needs much more support than maybe a 30-year-old university student, but still it's open for both of both ends of the, the continuum. And what's different about these activities is that youth exchange is always international. It, it involves at least two uh, groups of young people from different countries. You may recognize a summer camp. It's a similar kind of structure that the, all the participants come to the same place. They spend time there together, roughly a week or longer. And they have chosen a topic that interests them and then they have chosen a way of dealing with the topic, making up activities, exercises, uh, work team works together. And while they are, you know, running these activities, they learn about the topic that, that they have chosen. At the same time, it's an international activity and it's got all the excitement that an international activity has, you know, meeting pe young people from different countries, learning about their country, learning about their culture, being amazed about how you didn't understand those things about your own culture, making, you know, friendships, uh, new plans, learning participation by being involved in the decisions made by uh, it, in that process. Young people always travel with at least one adult that is called a, a group leader. And this adult helps them to safely uh, plan and implement their own activity. So that's a youth exchange. It's a very nice, nice, my, my favorite type of uh, project in the program. It's the safest option for young, young people to take their first steps in international activities because you can do it in a group. I recommend it to anyone. Youth participation projects, on the other hand, they may have a little bit more tighter uh, topic <laughs> choice than, than the youth exchanges. In youth exchanges, it's basically anything that you might uh, be interested in, as long as it has a link to the big, big uh, ideas of the pro, uh, program. Youth participation projects instead, the focus is on um, participation. What does it mean for the young people to participate in the society? What does it mean uh, participating in democracy? What does democracy mean? How can I involve myself? And um, whereas youth exchange has really strict numbers and lengths and so on, youth participation projects, however, don't. It's more like that when the, when the young people decide what they want to do and achieve, then they know what they have to do. Um, the other thing about youth participation proje projects is, sorry, I got mail, <laughs> that uh, they don't have to be international. Uh, so local activities can happen as well. And this is relevant because, again, when you look at the age of the young people, 13-year-olds might be more interested in local and, and, and activities closer to them, whereas uh, young adults may look, look at the world differently and may even have, want to have international projects because their topics are international or they want to compare their ways of working or they want to look at the democracy in, in a different kind of light. Um, Typical uh, ways of working in, in uh, youth participation process projects are, for example, simulating how decision making is done. Sounds a bit boring in my mind because you can really do a lot of much more interesting things. You can campaign for, you know, the involvement of young people in the society. You can campaign for maybe changing something. Uh, themed with your favorite idea of environment or or racism or whatever you can maybe encourage other young people to participate um, or uh, you can organize hearings of young people in democratic processes or um, you know anything that helps and answers the needs of the young people involved this is important in both of these project types. So it really links to the needs of the young people who are involved. It's not about the European 
uh, statistics or OECD statistics, it's about the young people involved. And when you when the adults work with these people, then they all start to understand what is needed for the projects. Um, youth participation projects can last from three months to a year. And because um, you can get a, a certain amount of money for every month, and then it de depends on your uh, project design, what kind of other uh, grants you can get. If you organize activities for other young people, you can get a grant. If you need to travel, you can get a grant and things like that. So nothing is predetermined. You have to sort of figure out what you want to do. And uh, then that defines you how much money you get. But this would be a good activity, for example, young people to compare their understanding on how society works, maybe learn from each other how, how they could be active in their societies or, you know, learn about how the society works and how to change it together. So again, here, I would involve anyone to talk about democracy and participation. Is that enough? Thank you so much, Pavel. To close up this session, I'm going to invite Mathieu to, to share a few words, a few conclusions, and a few uh, more suggestions around the priorities and the importance of cooperation with the neighboring countries. Yes, thank you, Danny. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am Mathieu Rumegus. I'm the director of the French uh, Erasmus Plus Youth um, European Solidarity Corps National Agency. And it's uh, a pleasure for me to, to participate in this webinar. And I hope that all the inf information that just have been given to you will be useful for, for you and will be useful to, to develop more projects. And I just want to conclude these, these interventions for focusing on two points. Um, first point, uh, I just wanted to say that we are in a very important period for Erasmus Plus and for the European Solidarity Corps, because as you know, or as you probably know, uh, both programs were adopted uh, two weeks ago by the European Parliament for the, the period 2021-2027. And in these uh, new programs, we will have four priorities. So I, I won't be long on these priorities because Tomek spoke about these priorities, that the, the program will be more inclusive, they, they will be greener, uh, also more digital, and also the youth participation will be a, an important priority in these programs. And the second point um, on which I wanted to focus is the importance of cooperation with neighboring countries. Uh, because it, it, has, it has been said, said several times uh, in the pre previous interventions, uh, both programs are open to neighboring countries, uh, South Mediterranean countries, Eastern Europe, Caucasus, uh, South East Europe. Uh, all these countries can participate in Erasmus Plus Youth and in European Solidarity Corps projects. Uh, and in the French National Agency, we, we host Salto Euromed. It means that our objective is to develop uh, both programs in the South Mediterranean countries. It's also to increase the, the quality in, of youth work in these countries and also to, to foster cooperation between partner countries and European countries. So it's the case in the Salto Euromed, but uh, the, the two other regional Saltos are doing the same job with the Eastern, Euro Eastern Europe, Southeast Europe and Caucasus. And for this new generation of program for 21-27, it's very important to, to have in mind that Erasmus Plus budget will increase. Uh, we have a great increase, uh, an 80% increase, which is very important. And it means that we, we will have more opportunities to, to, to encourage cooperation uh, between European countries and neighboring countries. So in this context, we are building a, a real strategy with, with other regional saltos, but also other national agencies uh, to increase the cooperation between Europe and neighboring countries. And it's one of, of our important priorities for the, the new program. So I, I won't be longer, but I just wanted to, to, to say a few words and to, to say that I hope that this webinar and this discussion will help you to, to develop more projects and more cooperation 
between European and neighboring countries. So thank you very much for, for the invitation and for this webinar. Thank you so much, Matthew. Uh, thank you for sharing. And uh, I'm really happy to, to hear all this about all these opportunities that are available for young people. And I really hope that all of you who are here will be able to uh, take part in them. And I would like to give a few minutes as well to look about look at opportunities uh, for youth workers and trainers. And I'm gonna invite Sonia to share a bit about that to conclude this part with the opportunities uh, before we move on to questions, uh, to answer questions and answers uh, in the end of the session. Uh, right, um, thank you, Dani. So um, just to conclude this part, um, You've heard from, just to go back into the structure a little bit, so you've heard from, from Natasha about the European Solidarity Corps and what you can do um, in terms of volunteering projects. Um, and now uh, within the Erasmus Plus program, um, there is um, what is called Key Action One. Um, Pavel um, explained, talked about um, the opportunities that are there for working with young people. Um, and um, also within the same key action one, in case you go into the program guide and you want to find it, um, there are of course the opportunities for youth workers as well um, and trainers. So it's mobility of youth workers. Um, and um, those um, types of projects um, are there for professionals in youth work um, to meet and um, to um, develop their competences further um, so that they can use them afterwards when working with the young people in their, in their daily work um, at the local level. Similar to the other activities, it's about international meetings. Um, it's, um, it needs to involve, uh, these projects need to involve at least two participating organizations coming from different countries. Um, often they involve a lot more. Um, it's about um, organizing, for instance, training courses um, or study visits. Uh, peer learning activities, networking activities, seminars, workshops, these types of things. Um, again, according to a topic um, of um, the choice um, of the youth workers and their organizations that they would like to tackle um, together with colleagues from different countries um, in order to, to build their networks, in order to build their competencies and the quality um, of their work um, with the young people. Um, so that's essentially um, mobility of youth workers. Um, you can do a preparatory visit as well. Um, and um, there's also um, something which is um, called system development and outreach activities, um, meaning um, you can also do an activity following, um, a small activity following um, the actual um, activity saying it's a, it's a training course, for instance, in case um, you're producing or you want to disseminate um, tools that are developed or invest more in the community building um, approach um, and so on. Uh, this format has existed also in the old program. Um, and um, it's, um, I would say in addition to the, um, to the opportunities for young people to meet and, um, and develop um, their skills and competences and learn about each other and experience international meetings. Um, it's also for the, um, for the professionals in the youth work, a very important opportunity. Um, and then um, there is what is called Key Action 2. And under that, um, this whole action is focusing more on the cooperation among the organizations and institutions, um, not so much on the individual youth workers or individual young people. Um, here we're talking larger projects, uh, more substantial, long-term. And um, here it's a bit more complicated as far as the, the cooperation um, with the neighboring partner countries is involved. Um, and they are also a bit still in progress of developing. Um, so here what you have are two, at the moment, two opportunities. One um, is uh, a so-called cooperation, partnership, uh, yeah, cooperation partnerships. Um, those are open for um, neighboring partner countries as well. But um, essentially, they are for program countries. Essentially, it's three organizations from three or more program countries that can cooperate um, on these cooperation partnerships. And um, they should really be projects to, um, well, according to, um, they should be innovative, high quality, um, and contribute um, really to achieving the policy priorities of the programs. 
Uh, here it's about um, increasing the quality of the work, the activities and practices of the organizations and institutions involved. Um, it's about opening up to other sectors, so cross-sectorial cooperation. Um, it's about building capacity of the organizations to work transnationally um, and um, to enable transformation and change. So it's also about innovation, bringing about innovation, new developments um, in quality um, in, in youth work. Here, um, you can involve partners from neighboring partner countries, but you have to argue really well. Um, and it depends a bit also probably on the, um, the approach the national agency takes um, on this. Um, so it says in the program guide, neighboring partner countries can be included if they provide an added value to the project. So that's a bit, a bit difficult, a bit challenging, but possible. Um, on the other hand, there are also um, so-called capacity building projects in the field of youth. And they, on the contrary, target uh, cooperation between program and partner countries to foster capacity building and youth work development in the partner countries. So there the approach is, is really different. It's not targeting the program countries so much and the developments there, but more the developments in the partner countries. Um, so here it's, it's, it's more the partners from the program countries that take on a supporting role. Um, all in all, they're quite similar um, in, in overall structure to the, um, to the, to the um, cooperation partnerships. They're also larger projects with a larger budget, a larger period of time. Um, they can involve a, a set of different types of activities um, so they're, they're generally speaking more complex projects. Um, these capacity building projects um, can must involve at least four organizations from at least three different countries. Um, they can take these projects can take up to three years, so really long. They must take a minimum of, of, of one year. And um, Maybe just to say um, that uh, for capacity building projects, there has been a call open um, with a deadline on the 1st of July, um, which is only open um, for cooperation with um, the Western Balkan region and uh, the partner countries in the um, Euromed region. This is, as far as I understood it, only this year like this. Um, it's a traditional um, opportunity. Um, and um, as the, the way this action is handled is a bit in, 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 in under development still, and they have, um, the commission is happy to make this opportunity available this year, while next year um, it might take a different shape in a different format. Um, capacity building, this capacity building in the field of use is specific because here the applications need to be submitted to the executive agency in Brussels um, and not to a national agency um, in a program country. I would suggest that if you're interested in these opportunities, um, you read really a lot more in detail what is written in the guide because these activities are more complex and they need a lot more background information. So this just to give you a glimpse of what's possible um, and um, yeah, you can find out more, of course, by, by reading the guide um, in detail and um, yeah, also coming back to us. And I'm sure also all the colleagues in the national agencies for further questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sonia. And thank you to all uh, the representatives of the national agencies, to Natasha, Pavo, and Matthew. Um, and thank you for sharing about all these amazing opportunities that uh, young people, youth workers, trainers have. Uh, and please do go and research more about them uh, and take uh, best use you can uh, of them. Okay. Um, uh, before I invite Tomek to share the last part of this webinar in terms of content uh, around tools and resources that are available for you to use, I'm just going to use this moment to remind you once more that in the chat you will have a link for adding your questions and please do so so that we can have a few uh, moments for that in the end. 
So, dear uh, participants, we already told you who we are as a Salto and uh, where the, about the regions, about the countries, so you know geographically with whom uh, you could cooperate. Uh, we have told about the opportunities, formats of cooperation, kinds of projects that you can, you can implement. So now, very shortly, I will just mention uh, more practical, pragmatic tools that might be helpful for you. Uh, in establishing such a cooperation. Uh, you, of course, you all know very well our Salto website, uh, and here we have our tools available. Uh, two of them are super popular, uh, but I will, of course, mention them. Uh, it's the European Training Calendar, where the national agencies, Saltos, but also the youth organizations are publishing their offers for seminars and trainings. And part of them are open uh, for participation of, uh, of youth workers and trainers from the partner regions. Uh, some of the activities are particularly focusing as, at this aspect. So you can find opportunities here. If you are looking for partner organizations, uh, whatever you come from, program country or partner country, the Atlas is here. It's our pa partner finding tool, uh, allowing you to present yourself, add a little description, but also to look proactively for partners uh, to, to establish projects. There we also have the toolbox. Uh, actually, Salto Euromed is taking care of it. Uh, and here you can discover different tools that might be useful whenever you run any kind of youth project. Um, also, there is uh, another platform here uh, for uh, um, multilingual uh, toolbox uh, where you can find information and content in other languages. Our Salto is taking care horizontally for the online learning. So if you're interested about the whole platform and online learning uh, aspects, as I was mentioning, as a regional Salto, we are working with quite um, distant uh, regions, so online comes uh, at hand here. Uh, and uh, also uh, talking about our website, uh, here we have the section where we name uh, and provide details about each of the Salto Resource Centers. Uh, and uh, here you can find information which I think will be uh, very much in your interest is about the info centers we are having in our region of Eastern Europe and Caucasus. Uh, if you think of the Southeast Europe, uh, more or less the same structure of uh, contact points, you can find details here. These are the active and experienced organizations uh, based in the countries uh, of our regions. So you can contact them. If you come from this country, they can offer you support in your local language. If you are coming from outside, our info centers contact points can be also helpful in establishing contacts, finding partners. Uh, learning about the context of the country and so on. And the colleagues from Euromed are also having their own section here and they are just about to establish a similar structure. So if you're coming from one of the Euromed country, uh, Meda country, uh, you can also expect that soon uh, there will be a contact point info center over there. And uh, we all are having uh, working with social media, Facebook and, and YouTube uh, usually, but also the others. Here in the chat, maybe I will just simply uh, paste uh, this number of tools that uh, you, can you can make use of. A big list, but uh, you can take it from the chat or we will also email you after the webinar so you can more easily and relax uh, have a visit to our social media and different uh, tools and simply discover yourself what's there thank you thank you tomek uh, thank you for sharing about uh, all these resources that are available for people to to access all right so we are getting close towards the end at uh, the end of the, the end of this uh, webinar and we've received a few questions in the menti and i'm going to invite uh, the three representatives of uh, the regional saltos to join me uh, in answering them uh, i see there has been some serious voting happening here in menti and so maybe i'll start with the one with most votes um which is, do you think that limitations within E plus and ESC can affect the willing of EU organizations to work with organizations from the three regions in long-term perspective? You wanna to go, Tomek, since you're the first one to arrive here on the spotlight? 
Yes, thank you for spotlighting me. I can take this question and my colleagues will answer the maybe the next ones. Uh, uh, even though there are limitations in the programs, and as you could hear, the uh, formats of cooperation, not all the formats of cooperation are actually available for the partner countries. Uh, still, uh, there are also other obstacles that we didn't discuss here much, uh, but in case you have a little experience with this, you can imagine that usually there are the visa issues. Uh, in case you work with the volunteers, then the issue of registering them locally when they arrive for a resident permit and so on. These are technical challenges. But actually, the, if you balance the gain and the, and, and the difficulty, of course, the gains are much more prevailing. I would say there is so much to profit. And whenever we talk with organizations, they underline they, that they receive so much more from cooperation with partner countries due to all this diversity, interculturality, and so on. Uh, then if they would come, maybe cooperate just with the neighbors uh, within the EU. So do not be worried about the limitations. Uh, all of this is just technical. And there is already a huge number of uh, experience uh, that we can share with you and show you how to make it possible. Thank you, Sonia. Do you have anything to add? We still cannot hear you. That's perfect. Here, no, no, you can hear me. Um, I I agree with Tomek. Um, so this is I, I see it the same way. However, I, I wanted to to just maybe just address another level that um, we've seen that um, in the in the past years um, for well reasons to do probably with the the, the policy and the programs or the um, the general. Um, well, policy is too strong. The priorities maybe um, that exist um, within the programs um, that, um, um, and voluntarily, yeah, very often, not necessarily by um, um, intentionally, the focus um, has been put um, on the cooperation with, with the program countries, within the program countries. And, um, because there are so many challenges, I think that are happening that we've seen inside the EU in the past years. That that uh, where there was a feeling that, that there's a need to address all of those, that the cooperation with the partner countries has been a bit um, gone to the side a little bit. Yeah, has been a little bit maybe um, less addressed, and therefore also um, by organisations, by national agencies, in the sense not by everybody, yeah, but overall. Um, because there was a feeling, okay, maybe if I apply for a project just with program countries, um, then maybe I have better chances to get funding. Um, and maybe on top, it's even also more challenging to work with a neighboring partner country. So maybe, you know, I, I, it's maybe we have to see if we want to invest on it or not. Um, so there was, there was a bit more of a hesitation, maybe. At least we've seen that a bit in the, in the figures and the feedback and so on. And um, I, I would just use that. I'm not sure if this is meant by the question, of course, but I would just take this moment to just say, um, this, is, this is really what we want to address now. And I think there's also a feeling among many national agencies they want to address this now. So, um, you know, if, if this is meant by limitation as well, um, we're really hoping to address it and to um, say, it's time, it's time to apply again for projects also involving the partner countries. In case, yeah, there was a hesitation before, it's time to do it again. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your answers. Uh, I'm going to jump to the next one, um, which is how can we work, uh, help cooperate with Salto if we are not part of an NGO? I can go, I can answer shortly, but maybe my colleagues, we also have a comment in here. Uh, of course, uh, this we are mainly targeting uh, the organized youth, uh, also in terms of um, groups of young people that are just about to organize their own project. We offer support, but we also cooperate with different experts. We work with youth trainers, so meaning individuals. Uh, we also 
uh, recruit uh, people to help us with uh, quality label in uh, within the European Solidarity Corps or another individual level of cooperation. But that's true. Mainly we are targeting, uh, besides the supporting national agencies, we are targeting youth organizations. Thank you so much, Tomek. We're getting close to the end. So maybe I'm just going to offer one last question because it also received a few of votes uh, are you planning any projects for young volunteers online this is interesting because we don't know when the epidemiological situation will be restored maybe just in a few words if you'd like to address this before we close the webinar Maite? yeah i can say that actually uh, due to the um, the pandemic uh, we have developed a lot of activities online so um, so and actually some of them will continue. So uh, uh, this is not uh, um, for us at least the main uh, the main issue because uh, we are still um, having well, we are we are implementing activities online. So um, so there will, will be others. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, let's uh, wrap this up together. Thank you all for, for the questions and for, for the answers. Uh, it's already half past, so I'm going to uh, close this webinar, but not before uh, sharing with you that um, a small reminder that this webinar is part of a series uh, of six online info sessions organized by Salto U. So today we focused on the three regionals. Uh, yesterday we actually had another sessions, a session focusing on Salto participation information. And the next webinar in the series will actually happen on 10th of June at 2 CET. And uh, in case you did not register for it or you did not know about it yet, uh, we just want to use this last minute to uh, let you know a bit what will happen there. And uh, to do so, we have here with us Eda, who will share a bit uh, about the next webinar part of this series. Hi, Eda. Hi everyone. <laughs> and knowing that uh, we are going out of time, I won't take much of your time, but... Um, uh, today, one of the keywords also captured in Wanda's um, graphic recording was learning. Um, and I heard this word also in the youth participation uh, session of yesterday. Um, what we deal with in SALTO training and cooperation in the youth pass team is indeed learning, how to support learning and documenting learning through uh, youth activities and solidarity activities. Uh, youth pass is a certificate and a process that's available to all participants, all learners of solidarity core of um, uh, youth part of Erasmus Plus and for activities of youth workers and also um, strategic projects. So all these activities that NA colleagues uh, previously have mentioned, uh, all participants are um, have the right to receive a youth pass. You may already be familiar with what youth pass is. Still come to the session because we have a very soon to be launched youth pass strategy and uh, the certificates that are being um, prepared for the uh, new uh, program. And if you are not familiar with the Youth Pass, then this is a good opportunity. In a short time, we will try to give you the essentials. So um, I, I kindly invite you, encourage you to join us and let's discuss together how to support learning and documenting learning and validate uh, the competences gained in youth work and solidarity activities uh, together. Uh, I will post the registration link um, uh, that you can still continue registering for this event and the events to come. Uh, and more information and the event link will follow uh, early next week. Perfect. Thank you so See much, you Eda. And I really hope that you will join us for the next webinar as well and for all the, uh, the remaining webinars from this series. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us today and for listening and participating with your questions and comments. Uh, and now just to close it up together, I'm going to invite you all to, if you want, to unmute yourself and please say goodbye to us in your own language, so, just so that we have a proper goodbye. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Bye.